Yeah, uh, hi, um... <laughs> the fact that my master must have told you everything about me. After all, master is... very talkative. <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner. Because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. Still, though you mistook me for an adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. For this, I am very grateful indeed. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti, too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend! Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends! Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title, Friend, very much indeed. Great! <laughs> well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. I really like Shenhua. She's a very, very good character. But before we do that, let's go to the building site and ask Ningguang's little helper how the progress is going. Secretary Paimon. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it! They're so good. I concur. It has a rich flavor, far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. Up we go! <laughs> oh! Oh God! They actually are rebuilding it! Jesus! I didn't. I didn't realize it was like already. Did that just change overnight? I just. I was running up this pipe without realizing what it was. <laughs> oh, there's Beto! Hey! <laughs> I just saw her for like a brief moment. Look, look! The Jade Chamber is floating into the sky! Um, but it seems to be tied down by something. That's because it's not finished. Well, yeah, it's not finished. Of course it's hey, not. Hey, Silent! And hey, Beto! Oh, hello! Hey! Um, person Paimon doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> hello, Yunjin! Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. I didn't expect Yunjin to be here. I know she's new, but I didn't know she would be part of the quest. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed Jade Chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. It already looks pretty good. The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the Jade Chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we brought some new materials to submit. One moment, I'll be right there. The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ningguang is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. Is Yujin part of your squad? Beto? You're joining the Jade Chamber contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. Greetings. Aww. <laughs> I really like Yunjin as well. She's so pretty. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is... Um... Sorry, I'm not sure we've met. Shenhe. I am there. Mm. Friend. <laughs> good to meet you. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate <laughs> of a friend crewmate of my friend is, is my part enemy. of the crew. Miss Yun is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, 
I have a feeling that we will get along very well indeed. To be honest with you all, I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow. So it looks like the three of us are competitors now. Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, I don't have any questions for Ningguang. I just wanted to help her win. In that case, I have a proposal to make. Yes. Lady Ningguang said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? Sounds great, but how does it change things exactly? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plastrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two <coughs> remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? I don't know Precisely. about that. It's like, I feel like, I trust, obviously I trust Beidou, but it's just like, I don't know whether Yunjin is trustworthy or not. Huh. Interesting approach. Okay, then. All right, I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of them. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? You can You can trust Master Zhang's smithing skills. Wonderful. We'll split into teams then, and whoever makes progress first brings all of us a step closer to victory. I'm gonna take off. See you later. Aww. Okay, let's go! By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Ooh, what's the opera called? Paima wants to go see it! The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. It's called The Divine Damsel of Devastation. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Um, I am putting money on The Divine Damsel being Shunhua. <laughs> I really now do feel like maybe doing the rest of this quest using uh, Traveler, Shunhua, Yunjin, and Beidou because I have all four of them, but <laughs> Yunjin, Yunjin is C6, but she's not built, and Shunhua is also not built. Hanfeng's Iron. Wait, what? Hang on, what? Oh, what? Oh, god damn it. Okay, I need to I need to do this. Other. Okay, I wasn't going to record Our this part, but wine look tastes who the same showed up. <laughs> okay, we may as well have a look. Why are you here? Are you here to see Pavasis as well? I was just passing through. What are you two here for? We're here to see Pavasis. Aw, oh, but this place is, is, is in as much of a mess as last time. There's a temple here, and a statue too. Why doesn't anyone come to maintain this place? Perhaps this place has been forgotten. Oh, now I get it. So it's not Master Zhang that's like... The reason why that quest was blocked off. Zhao is probably going to be in this next part, isn't he? Perhaps this place has been forgotten. How can people forget something like this? The Yaksha's are heroes who defended Liwei Harbor. Hmm. Zhao, are... Uh... Are you angry? No. The Yaksha did not perform their duty for any form of recognition. Eh? Uh, let's not talk about this stuff right now. Grilled Tiggerfish first. Uh, and if you want to have some Zhao, we can give you half of our share each. It's fine. Help! Help me! Huh? Did you hear that? There. Someone's calling for help. 
Oh, and he just warps away. Let's go! Eh? What about the grilled tigger fish? Pavan hasn't eaten yet! Oh, <laughs> there's a guy being beaten up, beaten to death by Hilly Charles. Thank you, almighty Adeptus. Thank you, mighty hero. Oh, what are the odds? We meet again. You know us? Oh! Right! That uh, I, re I recognize the name. That's where he was from. It's the guy from Lantern Right with the mask. How could I have forgotten you? He's Star Snatcher. I am Wang Ping An. Don't you remember me? Ah, Star Snatcher. Huh? What? What's Star Snatcher? Please, let's not bring that up. Not in front of the Adeptus. <laughs> you deceived everyone with quackery. You deceived the masses with quackery. <laughs> okay. I was just getting ready to make an offering at the Temple of the Yaksha, Pervases. But not long after I entered the mountains, I was set upon by those treasure hoarders. Th those weren't treasure hoarders! Those were, um, hilly shells! Thank you for saving me. Wait a moment. What were you doing at per What were you going to do at Pervases' temple? Were you planning to do something bad to his statue? No, no, I wouldn't dream of it! Then what were you planning to do? I wanted to restore the temple. My plan today was to closely examine the temple's current condition and arrange for the purchase of the appropriate materials. I never expected to be targeted halfway by the treasure hoarders and forced to flee. You weren't attacked- WHAT?! That doesn't make sense! You weren't attacked by treasure hoarders! But as I ran, I lost my way. As for the rest, you know what happened. Okay, so he was attacked- Was it- He was attacked by treasure hoarders and then attacked by hilly shells? Let's speak further at the temple. Right. This is hardly the place for conversation. Let's get to the temple first. We'll speak there. Go. I have other things to handle. Huh? You leaving already? And he's gone. The temple is in a terrible state. Alright, mister. Where did you suddenly get the idea to come and fix this temple? <laughs> well, that's a long story. Back when I was pretending to be an Adeptus, I gathered a lot of resources to help, ke help me keep up the act. Uh, but remember how I swore to do good after that Adeptus taught me a lesson? Well, after I returned, I was planning to destroy all of those materials of mine. But then I had a thought. Rather than destroying all this information, wouldn't it be better to write up my code of shut? I shouldn't have autoed. That way I can help others to see through scams and cheaters. To my surprise, the guidebook I wrote proved helpful to a lot of people. Even the Ministry of Civil Affairs- I SAID STOP AUTO! They then provided me with some additional scam countermeasures to add to the stuff that I'd written myself. To that end, they paid me a pretty hefty sum. Apart from that guidebook, I'm currently planning to write a book about the Vigilant Yaksha. In pur its purpose, of course, is to share the stories of the Vigilant Yaksha with as many people as possible. That way, I'll be able to put the folklore knowledge I possess to good use. As for this temple to Vivaces, I discovered it while I was compiling material for this second book. I found our sources saying this temple was built by our forebears to remember the Yaksha Pervases, but I never expected to find the temple in such a state of disrepair. When I returned and thought about it, I decided to fund the repair of this temple from my own pocket. After all, I, too, was guided back to the right path by an Adeptus. I suppose repairing this temple could be considered atonement for my previous wrongdoings. Hmm, sounds genuine enough. What do you think, Kodako? This sounds kind of genuine. Why don't we trust him? What do you mean, kinda? I am being genuine. 100% genuine. <sighs> oh, fine. Think whatever you like. If you don't trust me, then come back once work has started. You'll see. Can I now do the rest of the quest? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Hmm? Ah, hello. Are you here for something off the shelf? Or do you need something forged? Excuse me, Master Zhang. We were wondering if you'd heard of something called... A Wonder Core. A Wonder Core's not from Breath of the Wild. <laughs> of course I have. Sorry, um... Who's asking? My name is Yunjin. Perhaps you don't know me, but I believe that you forged some weaponry for my father in the past for stage use. Yunjin? Stage use? Oh, so <clears throat> you must be Miss Yun. <clears throat> Sorry. My brain's finally caught up. <sighs> it's not used to doing much beyond bashing a hammer all day. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's heard of you, Miss Yun. Even folks who don't make it to the opera all that often. <laughs> like myself. So, you're here to ask about wonder cores, huh? As it happens, I do know how to make them. Matter of fact, I made some for Lady Ningguang back when she was building the original Jade Chamber. 
The types of ore needed to make wonder cores are a little hard to come by. Lady Ningguang supplied them herself last time. I don't suppose you've brought any yourselves? No. We were gonna ask you what kinds of ore we need. <laughs> sure. Well, you'll need two kinds. Star Splinter Iron and Sabrosium. If I remember correctly, Lady Ningguang sourced her Star Splinter Iron from the Mount Tianhung area. They say it resonates with visions. Uh, we don't have vision. Well, no, we have two visions. It could take some work, but if you stick with it, you'll find some eventually. As for the Sabrosium, though, hmm, that's trickier. It's all but unheard of on the market. Then where do we start? Uh, I'm really not sure. Sorry. What I've heard is that the people around Mount Tianhung have some sort of magic trick that can pinpoint the location of the stuff. Of course, it's probably just hearsay. If you want my advice, start by looking for Star Splinter Iron around Mount Tianhung. And if you run into any locals, ask them a few questions about Sabrosium. Mount Tianhung. Interestingly enough, the story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation also takes place on that mountain. Yeah, and that, that's where, what's it, Yun, uh, Shunhua fought whatever the story I was I hear the view story, there whatever. is quite spectacular. A favorite destination of the Adepti, in fact. I bet you anything that the Damsel of Distress, or whatever her name is, is, um, is, is Shunhua, and Mount Tianhung is where she participated in a pretty big battle, or something. Perhaps it can give me some inspiration. Let's not delay. We should head straight there. I came to Mount Tianhung once with my father as a child. I remember it being such a long climb that I could barely feel my legs by the time we reached the top. <laughs> this is quite a trip down memory lane for me. Look at these majestic towering peaks and the gently flowing streams. It's like setting foot in paradise. No wonder the legend of the Divine Damsel of Devastation is said to have taken place here. Adepti wander oft where mortals seldom stride. Indeed. This looks like a place that one might expect to be frequented by Adepti. The Divine Damsel of Devastation is your upcoming opera, right? And the story takes place in Mount Tianhang. Huh. Seems like you have a real connection with this place. What's the story about, though? It's the story of a girl becoming a hero. Cool. A hero story? They're Paimon's favorite! The legend first arose in this area. It is said that there used to be a prosperous village on the mountain. In that village, there was a loving couple who were completely devoted to one another. One day, a terrifying monster appeared. The wife was out collecting herbs and was captured by the monster. Her husband was so distraught at the news that it broke his spirit and drove him to madness. The vile and vicious monster told the villagers, If you want to live... You must sacrifice a child to me. What a nasty piece of work! Ugh. Paimon sure hopes this monster gets put in its place! But the monster was so terrible and so strong that all within the village were terrified of it. They had no choice but to give in to the monster's demand. Just while they were discussing whose child would be given over to the monster, a little girl suddenly stood up and came forward. Ooh. No! Don't do it, little girl! <laughs> Look at my face. Unbeknownst to anybody else, she was concealing an exorcist's blade. She approached the monster's lair, I love that little feigning on fear her. and trepidation. When she finally arrived, she courageously drew her sword and entered into a fierce struggle with the monster, from which she eventually emerged as the victor. Her extraordinary abilities drew the attention of the Adepti, and they took her as one of their own. Her story became the stuff of legends. But alas, the paths of mortals and adepti seldom cross, and she would never again re-enter the mortal world. And so, destined to grace the mortal realm for but a brief moment, she vanished like a wisp of smoke into thin air. <laughs> That's how the opera ends. Look at Shunhua or remain silent. I'm gonna look at her. I really like this story. <laughs> but I personally think that perhaps the little girl was... <sighs> Not as brave as the opera makes her out to be. I'm not sure she deserves all the praise she is given. Hmm, I've never considered that before. 
Opera is always an interpretation of the events it purports to portray. A certain degree of deviation from the truth is always inevitable. When my father wrote the script for this play, I suppose his intention was to inspire his audience with the character of the Divine Damsel. Hmm. I think it's a great story. The ideal story. Well, it sure inspired Paimon! Let's go get ourselves some Star Splinter Iron! Yeah! Alright. Use visions. How do we do that? <laughs> oh, wait, is that it? Oh! That's interesting. It glows. Would this not have worked then if I'd been using... Oh, it doesn't work for Zhongli. <sighs> It doesn't work for Zhongli because he doesn't have a vision, I see. But it works for the other three because they do. There it is. There should be enough Star Splinter Iron. Now we just need to find that Sabrosium. I think I saw a village on our way here. Oh, yeah. Master Zhang said we should ask the locals for help. Why don't we try there? Hey, there really is someone here. Yunjin, looks like you were right. Excuse us, sir. Can we ask you something? <gasps> Hello? Huh. He didn't seem to catch that. Hello, sir. We were just passing by and wanted to ask if you happen to know anything about Sabrosium. <sighs> Is what? he trying to tell us to look for clues in the village? Well, whatever. Guess we're on our own here. Shenhua, Yunjin. Let's have a look around! Sorry, you can go ahead without me. I'd like to have a word with this gentleman. If that's okay with you, Uncle Mingjin. It's... It's... You know Shen He. Shen He. You're alive. The rumors were true. So, all these years? I'm sorry, I don't know how to find Sabrosium. But I think you can find some information in the village. And this place is deserted now. No one ever comes here. So you can rummage around all you want. What's what's with this guy? And how do they know each huh? other? You know this guy, Shen Uh... Thank you, kind sir. We'll go and take a look around. <laughs> you just like, I detect awkwardness, we need to Don't go! Don't worry. Mingjin has no ill intention towards Miss Shen he. She'll be quite safe. Okay. We can find in this village. All right, let's go. Uh, faster. Here. Okay, faster. Oh, pfft. she she like face planted into the hmm. wall. What's this? The doctor said you were gravely ill. Don't worry, I give everything I have to save you. My heart bleeds whenever I see you getting wearier. Your illness beyond treatment. How I wish I could suffer the pain for you. You said you had no regrets in this life, and you only wished for me to take good care of Shanhua, but you regret nothing. Why the tears? I don't know what I've been doing lately. Though I still breathe, I feel like an empty shell. I have read all the ancient texts I could get my hands on, looking for ways to save you, but this is utterly futile. I finally found it. It was Mingjun. He had kept the book that could save you hidden. I took it and followed its instructions to summon a god and offer a sacrifice. The god appeared. I told him I was willing to exchange my life for yours. He kept silent and pointed at our daughter, Shanhua. The god said her fate was to bear the curse of calamity and that she was prone to bring harm to those close to her. The god also said that she might have been the cause of your death. In that case, I thought I should. I left her in the cave that the god mentioned. Three days have passed and still no news. I grow restless from waiting, seized by an ominous feeling. I am sorry, my love. Forgive me. You too, Shanhua. Please forgive me. How stupid I was. How blind. Let me apologize to both of you in person. Oh my fucking god. Jesus! So... Shenha is the Divine Damsel? Now that I think about it, she does behave rather like an Adeptus. 
And she is about the right age. So that's why I've been getting the strangest feeling whenever I chat with her. I should have noticed it earlier. Oh, Christ on a bike. Is that really how it goes? Her, like, in order to save his wife's life, he made a sacrifice and, like, gave up Shunhua and then ended up regretting it and then killed himself? That is so dark. According to this text, the divine damsel from the opera was actually the daughter of the loving couple. And she didn't volunteer. She was sacrificed to the monster by her own father. Oh, the truth is even more lamentable than the opera. Now I understand why Shen he said the girl was not as brave as people think. It wasn't her choice to enter that ghastly situation. She was forced into it. Yeah, but it still doesn't really explain the curse of calamity. Did that god did that god offer did that god curse her or was she born with that curse? Oh. It looks like my father may need to make a few revisions to his beloved opera. No, I don't think so. I I think Shunha will probably try and advocate to leave it as it is. <sighs> Records of a changing so village. it seems that Shenha's father thought he was summoning a benevolent deity using a magic incantation. But in fact, he summoned an evil god's remains, which took the form of a monster. A branch family of exorcists used to live in the east of the village, but in around two weeks the mother died of disease, the young daughter went missing, and shortly after the father hanged himself on the tree in the yard of his own house. It has been confirmed that traces of an evil god's remains were found in the village. The villagers are panicking as no one is certain whether the evil god's remains are gone for good. Do be careful when you are in this area. Oh, this is so fantastic. This is such a great... Uh, this is such a great story. His obsessive yearning for his deceased wife led to a terrible tragedy. The villagers moved away in Jesus, fear like... without ever learning the truth. And now, this place is deserted. Alright, this definitely is not... Genshin has never properly been a children's game. But, oh my god, this got very dark very fast. Still, I do wonder what the connection is between Shenhe and Mingjin. Well, Mingjin probably tried to save her, didn't he? Hmm. We've looked everywhere, but still no mention of Sabrosium. Bullshit, we haven't looked everywhere. Let's have a look over there. Oh, we're not going back to those two yet. What have we got? This is it! Magic engraved on Sabrosium does not wear off easily. Some believe the stone to be a bridge between the living and the dead. However, finding Sabrosium is no need to is no easy matter. You need to be at the right place at the right time. Legend has it that you may find Sabrosium if you stand in the middle of the lake south of Mount Tianhung at dusk and look in the uh, sorry, look in the direction of the setting sun. So basically, we need to go to the middle of the lake south of Mount Tianhung at dusk, and we'll find us some Sabrosium! Let's go back and tell Shenhe the news! One year when I was back visiting, I heard a story about a white-haired adeptus from a merchant passing by. I never imagined it was you. I was a very close friend of your father's. I could have stopped him from performing the summoning ritual. I had plenty of chances, but I couldn't bring myself to stand up to him. I just let things happen, let it all escalate. And, well, we all know how that story ended. I bring flowers back here every year. And each time I wish I had a chance to apologize to you. Apologize for what? If you'd stopped him, he'd only have found another way. There is nothing he wouldn't have done for his true love. Nothing. Do you still... hate him? I don't know what I feel. I'm told my fate is to bear the curse of calamity, so my master bound my soul with red ropes to curb my aggression. But it also dampened my emotions, making me dispassionate, like the Adepti. So if you ask me how I feel about the past, if I hate my father or not, the truth is, I feel nothing at all. It must have been so tough for you all these years. Hello. Oh, then I will leave you all in peace. 
Jenna, it brings me some solace knowing that you are okay. I'll tell you more about the old times next time we meet. Thanks, mister. We found some info in the end. What was with him at the beginning where he was, like, breathing heavily or something, though? Is he okay? Jenna, look! This tells us how to find Sabrosium. All we gotta do is go to the middle of that lake. Hm. Let's go, then. Uh... Oh, poor Yunjin. Miss Jenna, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Just now, in the village, we found your father's diary. It turns out that many of the details in the Divine Damsel of Devastation are not true to the facts. So I'd like to change them. I bet she's gonna be like, no, don't. Why? Yep, I know. I know I say that opera always deviates from the truth. But now that the main character is standing right here in front of me, I cannot simply dismiss your lived experience in favor of my father's fiction. It's okay. I like your version. B uh, huh? My master once said that the day I learn how to use my strength for the good of others is the day that I can truly become part of human society. So, I hope that one day I might be brave enough to stand up and protect others just like the girl in the opera. But I've never thought this way before, and I wonder whether I will continue to think in this way. Don't worry. I believe you will. In fact, I think maybe you've already started to become the person you aspire to be. You just haven't had the opportunity to see it for yourself yet. Shinra! Yinjin! Cut the chit-chat! Let's go! Paimon, shut up! Let them have the we moment! Can't let someone else beat us to it! <sighs> oh god, this is really a phenomenal quest so far. Archon quests in particular are the ones that I look the most forward to, because they're usually the best. But I must say, Genshin's writing and the way that their stories are, are definitely getting a lot better. Like, uh, every- all of the characters are, like, phenomenal. Archon Chris Chapter 3 that I live-streamed a short while ago was really fun. Uh, and in this case, the pacing- the pacing and the, like, story is good, even though we have to, like, go from Inazuma back to Liwei again. Uh, both Yunjin and Shunha are fantastic characters. Uh... And, and just in general, this quest has proven to be really, really good. Two, three... I can see him! I think I just saw Zhao! I see him! He's right there! Okay, I... Okay, there, there he is! <laughs> Speak of the I devil, and he shall appear! Hi. What brings you here? Have they found a solution to the danger in the sea? What danger in Min the Guang sea? didn't tell you. Something has happened in Guyan Stone Forest. According to the contract, as an adeptus, I should not get involved for now. But these things can be unpredictable. I have a contingency plan of my own. Zhao, what Only are you- Only a single mountain lies between here and Liyue Harbor. If things get out of control, I will defend this place myself. Zhao... what? Why is he just here? Is that what we're looking for? Sabrosium? That's everything we need! Let's head back and report in! I'm so he was curious just... if Beto's made any progress. So he was just here? As like a foreshadow thing? I love the fact that, like, I just walked in, I just saw the sunset, and I just saw his silhouette on the mountain. I just knew it was him right away. The danger from the sea, though, oh, is that I'm curious about. Goodness. So, are they okay? This is some top quality ore you found. I think I'll get a good end product out of these. Guess now it's my time to shine. Hey, everyone. How's the A-team doing? Hello. I ran into a... Bit of a brick wall on my end. Suling's never seen a Wonder Core before, and says it'd take a lot of research for him to get up to speed. Leave the Wonder Cores to me. 
I'll work on them while you go about your business. Don't worry. <laughs> it won't take me too long. Much obliged, Master Zhang. We should look into the Adepti sigils next, but where should we find items relating to the Adepti? I'll sort that out. Oh? Mm. You got this then? Yes. I have been training with the Adepti for years. I know a thing or two about making sigils. When we first met, I told you I came for the Jade Chamber, not the contest. In fact, I came specifically to deliver Adepti sigils. Master heard that Ning Wang was planning to rebuild the Jade Chamber, so she sent me to deliver some Adepti sigils to her. Oh, Cloud Retainer wanted to help? Master also said she hoped that I can take this opportunity to rejoin human society. But now that I'm here, I wonder if I've been removed from the world for too long. There's so much basic knowledge that I lack. Maybe it won't work for me to stay here after all. But either way, I'm very glad to have met you. And I'll take care of those adept eye sigils. Without knowing the ins and outs of your situation, I can't say whether you should stay or not. But now that our paths have crossed, we'll always have a connection. So if you're ever feeling down, come find me on my ship. There'll be a drink waiting for you. Thank you. So, Master Zhang, I'll need to use your facilities to make the sigils. Fine by me. I'm actually curious to see how the Adepti arts work. Maybe I'll learn something. Master Zhang and Shen Hao start making the Wonder Cores and the Adepti sigils. Cool, two birds with one stone. Whew. Whew. The sigils are ready. Though they are in some respects inferior to my masters, I can assure you there will be no quality issues. I've finished forging the things you asked for, too. Great! Let's go submit them before someone else gets there ahead of us! Cool, let's go! Mm -hmm.